Hello, my internet friends. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Lindsay. If you're new here, welcome. What up? Uh, today, I'm going to be speaking on trauma, which is an interesting topic. I was asked to speak on this as it relates to INTJs and trauma. However, I think the principles I'm going to speak about today will apply to a variety of different types, especially if you tend to be a thinker over a feeler. Um, someone who may repress emotions a bit more, uh, this may be particularly beneficial to you, but overall, I think we can all learn a little something about neuroplasticity and uh, yeah, go with that. Uh, before I get started, if you guys want to book time with me, I have a link down below. You can book time on video chat with me. That being said, we're going to get started and get into this video. So actual traumatic events are unique in the fact that they can actually alter the sensory. They can actually alter the sensory of the amygdala of your brain. And the amygdala is actually responsible for the memory of certain emotions as they are tied to events. So as we experience life and go through our lives and grow as humans, our brain creates these little branches um, that intertwine and continue to go out based off of things that we experience, understandings we retain, and just how we go through life. Now, when we go through life in something that is negative, it is going to change the direction of those little narrow pathways in a way in which your brain associates that memory, that experience with something that was bad, right? And this is for the sake of our own survival. So, you know, if you were back in the day eating berries off a tree and you ate one that was um, the wrong berry and it made you very sick, right? The next time you came across a berry that maybe smelled that way or, you know, looked that way, it, it might give you the response of, oh my gosh, I feel like I'm going to be sick, right? Because your brain is triggering that memory of, no, this is not safe. Kind of like how alcohol poisoning, I'm sure, has worked for some of you. <laughs> but as we participate in new activities and participate in new changes within our own mindset, our brain develops new neural pathways. And what's crazy about this is that the neural pathways get stronger with repetition. Some of us call it muscle memory, but it's really just neural memory. <laughs> but think about this again, right? So you experience something traumatic, it creates that neural pathway, and then you relive it, right? Every time you think about it again, you think about it again, it's strengthening that neural pathway. But there's hope on the other side in the fact that you can strengthen it in a different direction. So our brain has this ever-changing potential. It's called neuroplasticity. We can reprogram our brains to do a lot of great and bad things. So having a traumatic experience is going to have a very strong and probably well-defined, let's say, a neural pathway within your own brain. And every time you relive that experience, just go through it in your head, you are just strengthening that route in that direction. This is what leads to PTSD and a myriad of other things. So what can you do about it? I believe the first step here really comes down to processing and processing the emotion attached to the event, right? That's what's happening in the amygdala, the place that is damaged right now. Or not damaged, it's just not operating the way we want it to. So first we have to process the emotion. Some people with FE, extroverted feeling, may need to be processing this out loud, going through what happened, going through the state of emotion. Those of us who have FI will likely want to process this internally. And the first step is just doing the processing, not reliving the event just for the sake of reliving it over and over again, but saying what happened during this event? What was I experiencing in my emotions? What, what was I experiencing in my emotions after? What was my process? And seeing it and accepting it as a valid response to having gone through whatever you went through. Now, those of us who have T over the F function, we like to, um, believe that the emotions oftentimes are invalid. So we'll say, ah, you know what? It's, it doesn't make sense for me to feel that way. It was whatever, it wasn't a big deal. Listen, if something is causing you to re-experience the trauma you had earlier on, on in your life, that means that the rationality should not have trumped the emotional experience and there's something that needs to be emotionally processed so you can move on in life, which is the rational thing to do. So one, you have to process the emotion, what you went through, Go through it in your mind and say, these feelings, these experiences were valid to how I felt at that time. But then next is say, 
this is a pathway my brain has built and this pathway is no longer serving me because this experience is no longer relevant in the application of my current life and path forward. I'm not saying you can just forget everything of your past life that you know was too much to deal with, but I'm saying deal with it, look at the emotion and say like, this was okay, process through it no matter what that takes you to do, however long it takes is fine. But now it comes to a place where you need to believe that the conscious shift in your brain is for your betterment going forward. No one wants to relive trauma, but it's almost as if some people who have unprocessed trauma believe that they deserve to be reliving it or it's something they can't escape. They don't have the ability to be free from it. See what that negative pathway is doing in your life, seeing how it's affecting your life currently and saying, this is not serving me in the direction I need to go. I am going to consciously begin to shift my brain in a different direction. So the last thing I'm gonna to touch on here is shifting your focus. You know, oftentimes for myself, I find if I'm going through an experience that is maybe it's already processed, but it's negative. It's giving me a negative emotional result of some sort. If I'm in a place where I'm like, I don't wanna be here right now. This is giving me a, a bad vibe. I'm going into like a bad mental place, you know, um, is to move, is to actually go and move and bring myself out of that environment so that my brain is able to shift to, oh wait, I didn't go down that long dark hole. I'm going now on a nice higher road and I brought myself somewhere else. So. For myself, I've found that actually shifting the physical environment when I'm going into that negative space will actually help me go into a space that maybe is just neutral, but allows me not to perpetuate that negative neural pathway. And there's lots of different ways to shift your focus. Um, environmental, I think, can be a big one. So shifting your focus with your physical location, with maybe the music that you're listening to. You know, sometimes it can be hard just to say, I want to think about something else, or I want to just um, feel something else. Oftentimes, I feel like the slap in the face of the change in the physical environment in some respect can just stop that trigger from happening and allow you just to neutralize long enough to begin to shift your focus and your imagination in a different direction. So those are my three tips um, to process the experience, the emotion, to acknowledge what it's currently doing in your life um, and that you do have the ability to go in a different direction. And then three is that as it may occur again, to shift your focus, to shift your direction and trudge forward going that way. And that's what I got. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did like and subscribe. I'll meet you down in the comments as usual. And I will see you in my next video. Till then, process all the things. And, um, you know, yeah. So our brain has this ever-changing potential. It's called neuroplastic. 